Okay, Friday the 19th of January. This morning did not start as planned. So after yesterday's hoo-ha of working out and understanding exactly what happens to the lithium ion leisure battery when it gets cold, thinking that I've got it totally sussed. All I need to do is turn on the engine That'll put in at least four amps of charge into the battery. The self-heating mode will automatically switch on and the battery will heat up. Sorted. The day starts in a very similar way to yesterday. So this morning, the alarm goes off. It's minus four degrees C again, but and I'm feeling smug this time. Before going to switch on, the diesel heat and getting errors and it all kicking off and potentially damaging the battery. I've, I've obviously checked the temperature of the, of the battery, first of all, and the temperature of the battery was minus two degrees C. I go and turn on the engine and I've got the app open and it's kind of like once you're looking at the app, it, it is live, but sometimes you do need to refresh it. So you pull it down, refresh, still not coming on. It's got the warning because the engine's on then. It's got the warning saying low charge protection mode or something like that. So it all kicks off again of, this is a sweary one again, I'm afraid. Me wasting a shitload of time trying to work, work stuff out. There's absolutely no point in getting onto Renergy help desk because they're fucking useless. And the Renergy documentation isn't very good, I have to say. In the Renergy app, there's, what is there, there's one row that says abnormal condition, something like that. And then it put, gives a number. Sometimes, if when there's something kicking off, there's a number. <laughs> there's literally nothing that explains what that number means. And then, I, so I search for this, and all I, I don't find anything from Renergy. All I find is Reddit and other forums with people asking the same question fucking poor show really poor show anybody that produces anything supplies any services just give people the details if it's a product explain everything because you're going to cut down on people calling in and wasting time on live chat or phone calls anyway so i find out in the end that this abnormal condition is because at five degrees c when the battery's at five degrees c as it gets colder after 5 degrees C, it gradually starts to shut down more and more. So at minus 2 degrees C, it's totally shut down. It accepts no charge coming in. I can use the battery. That's, that's true. I could use the battery. But I didn't want to because I don't want to damage it. But yeah, there's no charge coming in. So I'm thinking, if I can't put charge in, how the fuck do I heat it up? So I had a cardboard box in here <laughs> and I've like hitched, hooked up this cardboard box. So I'll show you, I'm back to kind of where I was before. So I've got the, the off. Um, so I've got this cardboard box wedged in underneath the sofa there. And, and I'm doing all these things with blankets and cardboard boxes and cushions to try and direct heat from that air vent to the battery way around um so so i've done i've basically done that i'm doing the, i've done the best i can and after like a few hours the battery is still only i think after i went to see dan this morning at 11 i was booked in to see dan to find out why the onboard electric heater doesn't work that's something else to, to fix so i was booked in to see dan at 11 i think so i had the heat inside on with all that st stupid fucking cardboard cowling trying to warm up the battery for five hours and i think when i got to was it at maybe one degree c from minus two degrees c to one degree c obviously the whole battery its core and everything has got really really cold and trying to warm it up with a bit of gentle blown air on top is just pretty impossible to be honest oh god every day is a school day living in a motorhome in the uk where the very defined seasons in terms of weather is definitely a learning curve and it's in an old 
definitely not designed to live in, definitely not designed to use the latest solar technology. The trouble is the battery box hangs underneath. There's nothing around it to insulate the battery at all. So it is properly out in the elements. So it was super lucky I went to see Dan today because I was able to chuck all these things at him. So we basically come up with a, a plan of action. So I'm going to see him next week on Sunday for the day. We're going to, what are we going to do? He's going to run a pipe from the diesel heater hot air pipe network, a small pipe into the battery box. And then I'm guaranteed I can run, if it's super cold, I can turn on the diesel heater and I can be pumping hot air directly into the, the, the box, which is the, the best way to warm up the battery if I need to. We're also going to remove the battery. We're going to insulate the battery with thick polystyrene underneath, all around the sides, all that business. He's going to do it so the pipe going from the diesel heater to the battery box can be removed because I don't want to overheat the battery. He's also going to run a pipe from the diesel heater directly into the bathroom because at the moment the only way for the bathroom to get heat from the diesel heater is through uh, one pipe to one bit and then a pipe along into the back of the gas and electric heater. Then basically most of the heat comes out the front of the gas and electric heater a little bit makes it where its way up the other pipe because out the back of the gas and the electric heater the pipes go like that so at the moment the heat's coming in and a tiny bit is trickling out like that because it's a y shape that's not going to work at all and also the other problem with the diesel heat especially if i need actually i'll explain this in a second no let me explain it first the other solution as well once he's done all that is to leave the diesel heater on super low overnight when it's a night when it's going to be five degrees or less because what i'm realizing now is me worrying me noticing that the battery hasn't got a lot of charge and all this sort of stuff it might be because it's been so cold the battery's so cold it's not receiving any charging from the solar panel all day i'm worrying that oh my god i've only got 36 percent battery left which probably because the battery's freezing cold i'm able to use it but i can't charge it up at all i'm driving along and it's not charging up at all my thought is yes when it's a night or a day when it's going to be five degrees or less i probably need to try leaving the diesel heater on but the problem with the diesel heater there is the heater pipes go underneath the wardrobe just next to me so that wardrobe gets really warm really hot the, the diesel heater thermostat thinks the motorhome's super warm because it's connected to the wardrobe where the rest of the motorhome's cold. So like earlier on, the diesel heat is registering 22 degrees C. My thermostat over there in the kitchen is 16. If I'm gonna leave the diesel heater on overnight, I need to know that I can set the diesel heater thermostat to five degrees. It's gonna, and so I'm as close as possible gonna be able to um, keep the battery at a minimum temperature. So when the sun comes up, the battery's gonna recharge. So that all kicked off. At the same time, I decided there's some things I've been putting off because it's fucking expensive. And in the end, I just said to Dan, look, I'm planning to live in this for at least the next 12. And then at the end of that 12 months, Arthur and I will decide, do we wanna continue with this lifestyle? So we wanna give it the whole of 2024. The shower tray, Dan sprayed the shower tray to fix all the hairline cracks. The whole shower tray is 20 years old, it's all gone brittle. The spray, is really rough and bumpy. There's no way it can have a shower in there and because it's gonna hold loads of water. It's already holding loads of, the water won't run down the drain. It's just it's just not workable. A shower tray on its own, not including labor, is 450 quid. So I had said no, but I just think I need this experience to be as good for me as it is for Arthur. Now, he's more likely to want a shower, an actual shower when he, when he gets hot and sweaty. He's growing up, he's maturing. It's really important that um, he's able to have his own good personal hygiene. I'm okay washing with the Lifesaver jerry can and shower attachment. And when the water quality is good, jumping in rivers and lakes and all that sort of stuff, I'm okay with that. I did want to get a motorhome with a proper bathroom. And at the moment I can't use it. I can't use it for a shower. So Dan's as a second phase, not this Sunday, not next week on Sunday, but as a, as a second phase, I'm going to go back into Dan. He's going to rip out the shower tray. He's then going to connect a pipe from the diesel heater, run it all the way up into Arthur's upstairs bedroom. 
and then have it all going around the back with just some holes in the pipe, a bit like a sprinkler system, so that we can also get some heating upstairs because it's cold up there. And and again, that's not that's not fair on Arthur. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not warm down here for me, but it's warmer down here than it is up there. And I want this experience to be pleasurable for Arthur as well as me. So if we're going to do it properly, let's not fuck about. So that that's going to be a sort of separate one. And there's there's a few other things that um, I've made a note of to to get done this weekend. I'm going to see my very very amazing close friend Steve Smith. And if, yeah, we always like doing jobs together. So we'll, we'll and we're going with Arthur this time. Normally I go on my own. Um, so we're going to give Oxwich a proper wash. And then there's some jobs like the the I'm looking at it and I can't think of the word the blind upstairs fell off so we're going to re-put that back on there's a few other things that thing we're going to have a go i might leave this for when i'm with dan but have a go at taking out the battery and putting some insulation some polystyrene on that dan gave me today i'm just nervous about taking the battery out plugging it all back in and then something not working because i don't know what i'm doing but we we might give that a go just to tide us over this for this next week and this life isn't easy at all but it is, for me personally, significantly more fulfilling and wholesome. I've said it a few times, but the sunrises that I get to to witness, to experience, are absolutely off the charts. And I'm, I'm out and about in be be beautiful wilderness and countryside, and it's my normal day. So, yes, I absolutely want to get over all these hiccups. I want and need a slightly easier life this year. I mean, this this will be the last season I'll experience for the very first time. So I'm hoping as we get into spring, which is when I bought Oxwich this time last year, I'm hoping there are no more seasons to experience for the first time. And as far as what I want out of Oxwich, and because I've agreed to these a few extra things with Dan, I'm hoping we're set then. Actually, Oxwich is in the garage with Chris CNH Autos tomorrow to have the front suspension replaced. There will be other mechanical things to change because every vehicle has that. But yeah, financially, I really want to stop spending money. That's the, the the other challenge with this is to see how little I can live on. And at the moment, for one reason or another, I'm not actually earning any money. And I haven't done, well, last month I didn't earn any any money either. So that is obviously, there's a sort of a plan around that. And that's the, the plan is that that rectifies itself next month in February. Um, so it's, it's all ultimately in the plan. As long as the plan works, it stays as a plan and doesn't uh, change. I want to prove that I can live on, on little money ultimately. It's a bit of a challenge to me as well. I am blessed. I work my fucking ass off, so I'm not lucky, but I am blessed. There are many other people in the world, equally as tenacious and working equally as hard, that have nothing. So I, f I feel like if you've got money, I mean, you can't buy happiness, obviously. But if you've got money, you can buy stuff. You have many more choices. You can fix problems that crop up that are going to cost money but I don't want to be that person I want to be somebody that is super frugal because I can be and and uh, I've got to, uh, so I've, when when all these problems crop up effing and blinding and I'm so pissed off because I just want a, an easy day so earlier on today and earlier on yesterday yeah I was well pissed off the battery's not working but does it help me to to does it help to remind me of the value of having electricity or the value of having water, or the value of having food. Fucking right it does. Absolutely. I'm having to work my ass off for these things exist. I'm not just getting up from my chair and flicking a switch. I'm not just walking into the kitchen or the bathroom and turning on a tap. And the thing I also like is when I do have electricity, it comes from the sun. Unless on the rare occasion we're plugged in a campsite or... I'm in the office. Outside of that, it comes from the sun. I love that when I drink water, that that's come out of, that's wild water, come out of a river or a lake or a stream into the Lifesaver jerry can, filtered and that's, that's what I 
drink with. That's what I use for washing up. That's what I use to shower in and to wash in. I love that. And and I, what I love about that is, is that it's not sterilised water where loads of really bad toxic chemicals have been used to try and clean out the crap that have come in the water f as it's arrived back at the water treatment plant from people's houses and businesses. It's, it's a fact that the pill and other antibiotics and drugs can't be cleaned out of tap water. So it's not necessarily good for you. It might hydrate you, but does it bring any minerals? Is it is it forcing antibiotics and the pill and all the other things that can't be cleaned out of tap water? That's what people are drinking, as well as all the other pollutants, so-called safe to drink. My feeling is, if I'm finding the freshest wild water, that that potentially does have minerals. That potentially does have more beneficial things within the water. That potentially doesn't have the things that can't be cleaned out of tap water. The other thing to consider is tap water comes to our house under immense pressure. Think of all those water molecules squeezed and squeezed and squeezed and pumped using creating loads of pollution because of all the energy needed to pump water into everybody's house and business. Wild water isn't pumped at all. It's gravity. Thank you very much. So I do love this life but I would like it to get a bit easier. So today I stayed uh, over at Studley yesterday. I drove to Nittany to Dan's workshop. Then I came back and went to the fantastic Empty Jars shop in Evesham, uh, which is a, a refill shop of not perishable goods, but mo most other things. And I love going there. I love chatting to Marino. We share very similar ethics. It's, it's fantastic to have these people in my life. It'd be nice to catch up with Marino socially. I've never asked <laughs> anything like that. But yeah, it's lo lovely to go in and see him. Um, lovely to have a proper chat. He's interested in my travels and I'm interested in his life as well. So, so that's nice Nice to restock that from a refill shop. So I'm avoiding where possible. Uh, they are also got similar ethics around organic produce and buying from ethical producers and all that sort of stuff. So I, I did that and this is where I'm getting smart with when I'm traveling, I'm thinking what can I do at each of those locations so I don't need to travel multiple times. Um, the good thing is as well, the long parking pass that I bought to park in Pershaw because it's Witchhaven Council. That means I can also park in the long-term car park in Evesham where I go to Empty Jars refill shop and also then I can go to Waitrose to buy the organic stuff that empty jars don't sell, like bread and fruit and vegetables and uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's kind of like I'm tag teaming um, different shops when I'm in Evesham, traveling through Evesham. And then I drove back over to Pershaw, uh, spoke to my good friend Fordy, uh, and went to the gym. Now my lower back's been sore today. After doing 15 minute exercise class from the Glow app, it's mad isn't it so it's brilliant i'm really happy because it shows that i'm pushing myself um, what i think i need to do is vary the exercise classes that i'm doing because i've repeated that one a couple of times i think i need to vary it do different parts of my body and over time i'm gradually improving the whole of my body so at the gym today i was going to do a run but i did an hour's run the other day when i was in the cotswolds and going to see the roman villa so today i did a, a lower body uh, yoga hatha class for 30 minutes which is really amazing for me because I have super tight mainly my left hamstring and left glute uh, that class is really really helping me so I'm repeating that one a bit and then that's that leads us up to now so yeah, my mission is to um, leave on the diesel heat overnight I've got the diesel heater set to five degrees for some odd reason and the diesel heater was saying that, that the thermostat is 22 degrees. Why is it even on? I can hear it working. I can feel heat coming out. If I've got it set at 5 degrees, it should be off. So there's a few questions I've got when I go back in uh, with Dan a week on Sunday. But I've tried a different program because you can have it as a thermostat where you set it by the temperature, target temperature. Then you can have it based on five different programs. So I'm trying program one, which should be the, the least amount of energy. But I can still feel heat coming out. So 
Anyway, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go with it. I haven't left the diesel heater on overnight in the past because I don't need to. I'm okay at being really cold if I can then get up in the morning and have the diesel heater on to, to warm up the motorhome. It's all good. Arthur always says he's nice and snuggly. I'm nice and cosy as well in my sleeping bag and with the blanket and all that stuff and my long johns on. I don't want to use energy when I don't need to, but I also can't have the situation I've had the last two days with the battery not working. Just for tonight, I'm going to leave on the diesel heater with the like, cover off the battery. Let's see what happens there with that. And then, uh, yeah, that'll allow me to get up early tomorrow, drive to the garage, leave the diesel heater, and then I get to see Arthur, uh, which is awesome. Yeah, normally I would be seeing Arthur on a Friday, but I'd agreed that he could go out for a meal for his uh, best of far, which is Norwegian grandpa, uh, his uh, birthday meal. And then I just said, I'd still love to see Arthur, but to be honest, all I'm gonna be doing is getting up early to drop off the motorhome at the garage. If Arthur wants to lie in, does he, you know stay with uh with with mummy so um so that's what they're doing so i've got a sort of extra night to myself and then yeah, i'll see arthur tomorrow at the angel which is where we love to go for breakfast i'm hoping he's up for uh, a breakfast and then fingers crossed the um the work all gets done at the garage with the suspension and then i'll be off to steve's so that's all good yeah i think that's it for this one i think the long and short of a year in a motorhome is I'm gonna have come a heck of a long way. I'm gonna have experienced a shitload of things. Uh, I'm actually parked around Fladbury tonight. There's a really nice spot that's on a very quiet road, nice and protected, sort of a good place to come when I need to be sheltered and, and lovely and quiet as well. Ah, that's the other thing. I, I haven't been sleeping since my dad died. So that was obviously one reason, but now it can't be that anymore. I've been trying loads of different things. I've tried lots of things in my lifestyle. I know all the things to try. It's still not been working. So the one thing I hadn't tried, which my good friend Nicola suggested was earplugs. So I've got some earplugs tonight, um, which are up here with my book. They're absolutely tiny earplugs, which you might not even be able to see. I can't even open the bloody, there we go. So tiny little earplugs. I'm gonna give them a go, just if they're dead in the sound and help to re re reduce, if it's noises. If it's an odd noise that's waking me up because I'm intimately connected to everything around me in the motorhome. That's the last thing, thing to try really. And the other thing I got myself because I love running and if I'm at the gym I get so bored on the treadmill and the rower. Um, I bought myself some proper headphones that actually wrap around your ear because the earbuds I bought ages ago are bloody useless. They fall out. Um, constantly especially when I sweat. So I use those today at the gym to do the yoga session on, on the mats so that was all good is that it maybe i should record one of these at the point that shit's kicking off because <laughs> i when i'm recording these in the evening i've had time to reflect on what happened how i reacted and all that when i'm in the moment i'm so much better than i was i am but i'm i'm still i still have a reaction so maybe that's what i'll do next time i'll i'll do an early video diary for the day and then I'll do one then I'll reflect on that day the next day